What is the acceleration equation of the universe? Let's answer this by looking at a question from the International Physics Olympia that is worth a staggering 0.9 marks. We're going to apply the laws of thermodynamics to the entire universe. Let me show you. The first law of thermodynamics says that the, the change of energy in a system is equal to the work done in a system plus the amount of energy has been inputted into the system. Because this is an adiabatic process, this means that delta Q, this term here, will be equal to zero. And our first law of thermodynamics simplifies to this equation, delta E plus PV is equal to zero. So what we're going to do, because we're interested in how things evolve with time, is to differentiate. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to take the time derivatives of those quantities. The first expression that I really need to differentiate carefully is v dot. So let's differentiate the volume with respect to time. The volume of the universe is typically expressed in terms of its radius, which is dependent on time because it's actually expanding. So the way we express it is r as a function of t is equal to a this factor over here as a function of time multiplied by r which is not a function of time. Assuming a spherical piece of the universe that is uh, that is expanding we could easily find v dot to be four thirds pi r, uh, r as a function of t cubed and then we're going to take the time derivative of this expression. So dv by dt will be equal to d by dt of this spherical section of a volume which will be 4 thirds pi r as a function of t cubed. But only this factor here depends on time. So because rt is equal to this times that, we can take everything else which doesn't depend on t outside of the derivative. So we can say that this is equal to 4 thirds pi r cube. This here is just a constant, not time dependent. And um, then we can say that this is equal to d by dt of a of t, which has been cubed. Sometimes we tend to denote this just to not get confused as this here having a little uh, dependence on the distance only. So um, we can now use the chain rule and this here will be equal to 4 thirds pi r s cubed and uh, if we differentiate that using the chain rule we're going to get 2 a t squared uh, sorry 3 a t squared multiplied by the derivative of the inside function which is just d a as a function of t by dt okay well this actually is a function in terms of the original volume, if you think about it, because the original volume is just 4 thirds pi r s cubed multiplied by a t cubed. So this is actually just three times the original volume divided by a as a function of t times d a by dt. Just as a shorthand notation, I'm going to write this as a dot. So we've actually expressed v dot as a function of the original volume times the derivative of the scale factor, which actually tells us how the universe is indeed um, accelerating. Well, let's plug this back into this equation and we're going to use one of my favorite equations, E is equal to mc squared. Now, the change of energy will be equal to mc squared, but remember, mass is equal to uh, density times volume. And in the expansion of the universe, this here is a function of time. And this here is also as a function of time. So just applying the product rule, what we're going to get is m dot, because m is equal to rho times v. And they're both function of time. We're going to get rho dot times v plus v dot 
times rho and um, plus or multiply by c squared plus p v dot is indeed equal to zero. Now we're definitely getting there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just divide both sides of the expression by c squared just to keep things um, a little bit uh, simpler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by c squared like this and we're almost ready. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this expression for v dot and plug this into here. So what we have is the time derivative of the density multiplied by the original volume plus v dot, which is equal to 3v a dot over a, like so. And that's times the density plus p times v naught over c squared, v dot over c squared, but rather than v dot, uh, once again, I'm, what I'm going to write is 3v a dot as a function of t divided by a of t. And we're almost there. Now, all we need to do is just a little bit of rearranging. And uh, so this thing is equal to zero. So let's take out a common factor out. So what we can get is rho v plus, actually we can cancel out the v's first. So let's cancel out the v's first. And what we have is rho plus three times a dot over a. And on the inside of the brackets, what we're going to have is rho plus uh, p over c squared, like so, and uh, yeah, that's it. How amazing is that? This is an equation in terms of a dot, which tells us how the radius of the universe changes, and this is the second of the Friedman equations. I hope you have really enjoyed this video. What you should really check out next is my video on Pascal's infinite resistors, which is just over here.